What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to test ride and review this purpose-built 2023 Fat Bob. So it seems like recently a lot of people have been hitting me up saying, hey, come pick up this bike, come take it for a ride. I'm not shy. So as long as you're somebody that I know, I will absolutely come pick up your bike and take it for a ride, which is what happened in this case. So this bike was built by a good friend of mine, Rocky Timms. He is the owner of the Timms Harley-Davidson dealership in both Anderson, South Carolina, as well as Augusta, Georgia. A lot of you know the Anderson dealership is the one where I go do most of my reviews at. So I point that out because at the time of this video going up, this bike will be for sale. So if you like what you see, be sure and reach out to them. I do not know the price of this thing. That's one of the beauties of my job is I just get to ride it, have fun with it, enjoy it, and then let them handle all the other side of it. But like I said, hit up Tim's Harley Davidson in Anderson, South Carolina. Tell them you saw it on this video and you want a good deal. Now, before we jump into it, I want to remind you guys that this thing could be yours for as little as a hundred bucks, including shipping. Go to my Instagram at Blair underscore Snipes for all the details. Any of the recent photos or videos of this bike should have all that info on there. So getting back to this bike, like I said, this is a 2023 Fat Bob, which was the last year of the Fat Bob. I was sad to see it go. I understand why I had to, but still sad to see it go because it's one of the few soft tail models with inverted front end. So what am I talking about? For those that don't know, that means the shocks are technically upside down compared to a traditional suspension. So this is what uh, most of the Harley Softail models come with. The Lowrider S, the ST, and what used to be the Fat Bob uh, all came with inverted. I'd really love to see Harley Davidson move all their stuff over to that. But not only is this an inverted front end, this has Olin's cartridges inside, which makes a huge, huge difference. So the inverted front end's already good. The Olin's inside makes it that much better. So to go with that, there is a Olin's piggyback adjustable rear shock on the back of this thing. Also really, really nice. We'll move back around to the front of the bike. So you see it's got this nice clean little fairing. Hard to put a fairing on a fat bob in my opinion, make it look good. This one does look really good. I apologize, I do not know who makes this one, but I'll be sure and find out for you guys if anybody wants to know. While we're on the front of this bike, I'll also show you not only for looks are these orange, I assume you pronounce it Oberon. Uh, they're made in England, so <laughs> there's really no telling, but I've ridden a few bikes. Uh, Rocky tends to put these on most of his bikes. I've ridden a few of them with these levers. I like the positive feedback feel. They feel better than a lever as far as when you squeeze them. Uh, both your clutch and brake side just have a little bit more positive of feel. And as you'll see this little knob on top, these are adjustable. So you click that in or out to move your lever closer to the bar or farther away. Now it's just the lever, you can see the pivot here. But these are super nice and I feel like just that little bitty touch of orange on the green and black kind of ties in that little hint of orange there. Super subtle thing, that's something Rocky's really good at. Also, he's put these small little Arlen Ness mirrors on there. Now, I do love the look of a bike with no mirrors, but I absolutely hate riding that bike with no mirrors. So, I'm glad there's something on here. These are nice, clean, simple little mirrors that let you see just enough when you're switching lanes. Now the Fat Bob comes standard with forward controls. Uh, this one has been switched over to mid controls, which lends itself to much more aggressive riding, which is what this bike was built to do, ride in the mountains. So these are the Krauss Moto pegs and these things are super nice. Uh, they are three inches wide and about three and a half inches long. So it gives your foot a really, really good resting spot as well as looking good. And it's got some grippy texture here. Now you'll also see that this bike is running Krauss risers. So when we do floor bikes at the dealership, floor bike is essentially just a bike that we've gone ahead and put parts on. And that's kind of what this is. We always go with Krauss just because their stuff is really, really good. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. So these bars are from Flymoto, but we source them from Krauss. And the reason we do that is because Krauss will machine a little notch and you're not gonna be able to see it, but you see all those wires coming out. They machine the notch 
to let those come out. Because if you just go buy Fly Moto bars, uh, you're gonna have a nightmare trying to put them on because all the electronics for your switches, for your throttle, for your turn signal, all that stuff has to run through the bars and there's nowhere to bring them out. So if you wanna put bars on your bike, I do recommend Krauss Moto risers as well as their Fly Moto bars. And this thing's also got a Krauss seat on it. Now I do wanna mention Krauss did not sponsor this build. Krauss did not send these parts or anything like that. That's just genuinely what we normally run because we do really like their stuff. And I may possibly do some cool stuff with them in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Something very out of the ordinary, we'll say that. On that note, same thing with the exhaust, Sawicki Speed. So we're fortunate that Sawicki Speed is just one state over. So we've done a lot of stuff with them. We've done out a lot of bikes with their pipe on it. We really like the performance, we like the sound, we like the look, and we like the way they do business. So for that reason, there is a Sawicki Speed pipe on here. I just noticed that at some point I've lost a screw, but you can see these carbon fiber heat shields on here. Uh, myself or Rocky has somewhat melted our boot to that exhaust. Uh, but really good looking exhaust on this bike. I also want to point out the tires. I was really, really happy to see this. So these are the Shinko 777s on the front and rear. Uh, yes, they wear out pretty quickly, but they stick really, really well. These are some of the best sticky tires that you can get. Same thing I'm running on my bike. I literally could not get a tire to stick. Uh, that bike's making 145 horsepower and it's got a very skinny tire on the back. So everything I tried to put on there would just break loose when you start to hammer on it. So I ended up with the Shinkos. So I was really glad these are on there because again, the objective of this bike is to go right in the mountains. So you want a nice, sticky, confidence inspiring tire. On the back, you'll see you have the Harley Davidson LED lights. Not a huge deal, but there's not a lot of lighting back there. So that does help. That does make a good difference. On this side, not a whole lot to see except for the primary cover is one of the Harley Davidson collection, as is that shifter tip. Uh, I can't remember the collection off the top of my head, but I'll be sure and throw it up on the screen right now so that if you're interested in getting the stuff that looks like that, you know how to do so. Now that that's out of the way, let's get this thing out on the road and see what it can do. All right, so as I said, this bike was built to go ride, have fun in the mountains, which is exactly what I plan to do with it. However, today is the only day I have to accomplish that. And I don't know if it's translating on camera or not, but it is overcast with a crazy good chance of rain. So I'm just gonna find curves on some local back roads like we're doing right now, just to kind of put this thing through its paces and see how this thing feels in the corners since that's what it was built to do. Now, one of the, not really reservations, but um, one thing I kind of want to test is that fat front tire, you know, like that thing is, it's not necessarily made for what the fuck is this? That was pretty rad. Um, always stop and help the turtles, guys. PSA, if you see a turtle, save his life. That's actually a really big turtle. Um, if you've never done it before, grab them from the back uh, because sometimes they're angry. But anyway, back to the point. The front tire on the Fat Bob. So these tires are changed, like I said, in the walk around review to the Shingo 777s, which I love, but uh, it's still a fat front tire on there and not necessarily the best for cornering. So we're going to see how that goes. I mean, so far, these corners that we're hitting right now are pretty mild, uh, but it, it feels really good. And I want to speak to that because I said in the walk around review how I like the inverted front end that Harley does on this. And yes, this is Olin, so 
it's a little different, but I've ridden plenty of stock Harley Davidsons, as you guys know, and they're inverted setup on the soft tail model. So the low rider S and what used to be the fat Bob, but the fat Bob went away in 24 is so much better than their standard suspension setup. So my personal bike has the regular forks on it. I can hop on a bone stock like Lowrider S, Lowrider ST, and go so much faster in the corners because it, it feels that much more confident. And same thing on the touring bikes. I was able to ride the CVO uh, Roguelite ST, and same thing on that. You know, that inverted front end. Why Harley doesn't do it on all of their bikes, I do not know. Uh, but I will keep on pointing that out and trying to at least do my part to hold them accountable. The suspension they use on everything else is just dated technology. It's, it's time to make the move. Um, I even said it when I rode the Indian, the Indian's version of the Roguelite. That was my favorite thing about that bike was how great that suspension felt, bone stock out of the box. So we skipped ahead a little bit. I wanted to skip ahead to where we got to some curves or are some coming up. I don't know that guy, <laughs> just for the record, I didn't pick up a new riding buddy. But till we get to the curves, I want to talk about the Fat Bob going away for 2024. I just think it wasn't that popular of a bike. A lot of people like the look, but not enough to buy it. And then you've also got a really small three gallon gas tank. And as someone who rides a bike with a three gallon gas tank, it's not fun. As you can see, the, or maybe you can't see, I don't know, uh, 154 miles until empty. I just started this ride uh, five, 10 minutes ago. So not a whole lot of ground going to get covered. And obviously that depends on how you're riding this thing. So I think for those reasons, you know, it's, it's kind of out there in the looks and it's got that small gas tank, but it sucks because this bike does handle like a dream. And yes, obviously this one's set up to do so, but out of the box, other than the forward controls, I really like the fat Bob. Sorry if this test ride is jumping around all over the place. Again, that's just because I'm trying to show you guys more of the curves, keep us out of traffic, all that good stuff. But at this point, I have enough miles on this bike to know that this thing does exactly what Rocky set out to do, and that is slay some corners and this is coming from a guy that self-admittedly is not all that fast in the corners. I, I just, I don't feel that confident for some reason. I never really have, but that's why I'm a little more in tune with a bike setup uh, inspiring confidence because I've ridden bikes that are just not good in the corners. When you put a guy that's just not that fast in the corners, it's very noticeable. But then likewise, when I hop on a bike that just feels effortless, like this one, it's it's a breath of fresh air. So since the Fat Bob's going away, my recommendation, if you're in the same camp as me and you want something that kind of helps you enjoy the mountains and the curves a little bit more, um, Lowrider S, Lowrider ST, both great options. Uh, CVO ST, and yeah, I know I'm naming expensive bikes, but those are the only ones in my experience that really do what I'm looking for a bike to do. So this road, as long as there's no traffic, should give us a pretty good test for corners. Constantly worried about someone being over the yellow line as well. Because unfortunately, as much as I'd like to claim we are, we are not on a closed course. Now let's talk about the riding position on this bike. Uh, I would not be doing you guys any favors if I didn't address it. It doesn't feel cramped. That's not the right word, but my bike is the same setup, mid controls, T-bars, roughly two inches taller than this, but overall the same setup. This bike, I feel a little more closed in as far as 
I'm a little closer to the handlebars, uh, and part of that may be just this setup. Uh, I'm not sure on the bike's geometry different than mine, but on paper, it seems like these two should feel simpler, and they don't. So as I said, cramped is not the right word, but this is a much, much different feeling on this one. But with the intentions of this bike being for cornering, it's good because on my bike, I have a little extra space between me and the bars. So to help hit corners a little harder, I find myself sliding up a little more towards the front so I can kind of get down a little bit harder. And this bike, you don't have to do that. You're already in that position. Now, if you were gonna try to take this bike on some trips, like I said, I would recommend putting that engine guard on the front. Uh, Rocky tried that, I believe, on this bike. And the issue that he ran into was he's a little better in the corners than me. And he was, uh, he was dragging them, which can get super sketchy. So maybe you just throw out some kind of little highway peg or something. I don't know. I don't know. You figure out something. And, and I don't know that no more gas in this thing holds that you wouldn't be comfortable on it uh, until you need gas again. So this motor is stock. And I know how a lot of us feel about that. Uh, we want to do something to it. Now, this bike does have full exhaust. Uh, and would I do something to it? Sure. Does it need it? Absolutely, positively not. This thing in third gear is an absolute beast. Again, for what it was designed to do. Um, the problem is you start making too much power and it's a little bit of a handful and becomes less usable for its intended purpose. So what would I do to it? I would probably do a cam and call it a day. Um, as far as cam recommendations, because I get that a lot, I personally like the stuff from Star Racing. There is a lot of good stuff out there. So if you go with any of the top companies, you know, I know the SNS 475 cam is extremely popular and sounds extremely good in this bike. The Star 3030 cam will be fairly comparable in sound. Um, Performance-wise, I don't know. I'd have to look at them back to back. And and I get nothing from Star. Um, all my Star components that went in my personal bike, I paid for. But I just I like their stuff. They're a tried and true, no nonsense company that uh, backs their products up, both with dyno numbers and real-world track testing. Uh, a lot of other companies might be doing that, but they're not showing you behind the scenes. So George Bryce Star uh, is the Instagram page, I believe, for Star Racing. I don't know that they have like their own separate page for that. Uh, I'll look, and if so, I'll throw that one up as well. But be sure and check them out. That's the only thing I would do. My bike is super fun, obviously. If you don't know, mine's making 145 horse, 142 torque, which is insane and a little soft tail standard. The problem with that is it makes you wanna ride like you've got 145 horsepower everywhere you go. And then when I ride with my buddies that don't or have an older bike, a five speed, what have you, that you know about 70 is their top speed, it's, it's like torture. So my bike running 70 is like their bike running 35. That's the equivalent that I've, I've given them because if 70 is their top speed, half of that's 35. Allegedly, I've been able to cruise at 140 with a little bit left in the throttle at my bike. So we'll call it 140 top speed, even though that's not. 70 miles an hour is half of that. So you're doing half what the bike could do, it sucks. So <laughs> I think whoever buys this bike is best suited by doing a cam if you do anything at all. Like I said, doesn't need it. But I would do the cam. It's already got full exhaust from Harley. It's already got an open air cleaner. So there's really nothing else you need to do. As far as other things I would do to this bike if it were mine, 
I would throw my handlebar bag up here just so I have somewhere to put things. I've got a few things in my pocket right now and I hate that. Uh, I like being able to throw my stuff, you know, keys and all that in a bag, get it out of my pocket so I'm more comfortable. I would throw my quad lock cell phone mount on here, which I easily could have done, but I'm taking this bike back tomorrow, so it wasn't worth it. Um, someone left a comment the other day on my cell phone, uh, motorcycle cell phone mount uh, shootout that I did where I compared quad lock, rock form, um, the name's escaping me, the little metal one that sticks to your tank. I'll throw it up on the screen right now. Um, Ram mount, I compared all the big ones, or most of the big ones anyway, and, and chose a winner out of that. Clearly I chose quad lock because that's what I do. But I mentioned in that one I would give you guys a long-term review, and I have not done that, but the quad lock I have absolutely positively zero reservations on. It's been a great, great case for everything that I've needed it to do. So I do recommend them. There is a code down below that you can click to get their stuff. Uh, but that said, the rock form one wasn't bad either. Whichever one you get, put the vibration dampener on the mount. That's an absolute must. You will 1000% ruin the camera and your cell phone if you do not use the vibration dampener. So as you can see, we're starting to get into a little bit of traffic. So we're gonna wrap the test ride portion up and we'll end this in the shop where I'll give you guys my final thoughts on this bike. All right, guys, let's do final thoughts on this bike. So first of all, I gotta say looks wise, I am a big fan of this. It's very clean, simple, subtle, um, kind of understated. But more than that, I like how it rides. So I can go faster in the curves on this bike, which I just rode for the first time today, than I can on my own personal bike that I've had for quite some time. And that all comes down to the suspension. Uh, part of that is having the Olins, that does make a big difference. But also this inverted front end is just that much better. So I think this is an amazing bike. I do not know what they're gonna be asking price wise, like I said in the beginning of the video, but this thing has just barely 600 miles on it. 2023, uh, I don't think it's ever been titled so. This is gonna be a really, really great bike for somebody, or maybe this just gives you some inspiration for things you may wanna to do to your bike. Now, I kinda of touched on this during the test ride, but let's talk about who I think this bike is for. This is probably not your long distance guy. Could you do it on this bike? Sure, absolutely. Is it gonna be the most comfortable thing in the world? No. Do you have anywhere to put your things? No. Can you put bags on the back? Sure. Will it kill the looks? Yes. Uh, like I said, I would probably go with the handlebar bag and just run this bike as in a round town, mountain ripping, you know, bar hopping, if that's your thing, type of bike and have a different bike for my trips. As this thing is set up, it does have a solo seat and no passenger pegs. Both of those things can be easily fixed. Overall, I'm a fan of the Fat Bob. I like it. As I said, I was really sad to see it go, but I understand why it had to. That's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to make my personal soft tail standard yours, see it in your garage, you could do so for as little as 100 bucks. Check out my Instagram for details on that, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.